Hello there and welcome to The Meaningful Stitch. I'm Amy Palco and I'm coming to you from Edinburgh, Scotland. And this is a special episode because I want to tell you all about an amazing event that I went to at the weekend called the Scottish Wool Producers Showcase. Now, I bought some things at the showcase. I had already had some things from some of the vendors that were uh, selling at the showcase. And I've made some items from yarn that were from the vendors at the showcase. So I've decided to bring all of that together and share that with you. What I want you to know is that I have written extensive show notes which are available um, by clicking on the little chevron, the little downward arrow, it'll create the description box. And you'll see there that there's a link to a Patreon. Now that Patreon link is free to access for everybody and it will show you links to all the vendors that were at the showcase and all of their Instagram accounts and all of their websites. So just for you to have a, like a way of accessing more information about them, but also that if you wanted to buy some of this beautiful yarn, then you could do that too. So it was a wonderful day. Like I said, it was at the Dewar Centre in Perth and we went up there from Edinburgh, a, a little group from our knit night and we had a wonderful time. It was, like I said, uh, tickets were sold out, so there were no tickets on the door. And so it was a, a lovely, well-attended event and lots of excitement, lots of passion about this wonderful uh, wool industry that we have here in Scotland. And really it was a, a delight to see how popular it was and, uh, and how it's growing because this was the second Scottish Wool Producers Showcase. The last, sorry, the first was last year. And, uh, and it was in the station hotel opposite Perth train station. And it was a much smaller event, whereas this event had a few, had more vendors and it also had capacity for more people to attend also. But even then it was sold out. So it's good to see that it's growing and it's being so well received and quite rightly so. Eva, who is the director of the Scottish Wool Producers Showcase, is also the director of the Scottish Yarn Festival. And that's also doing so well and really growing and it's become a real cornerstone of the Scottish knitting calendar. So if you're in Scotland or if you're looking to come to Scotland for a yarn inspired event, then I would really have a look and make sure that you're timing your visit for one of those wonderful festivals, either next March or this coming September when we have the Scottish Yarn Festival. I would also recommend that you sign up to the newsletter on the Scottish Yarn Festival website because that will tell you when tickets are going to be released so that you don't miss out. <laughs> okay, my love, so I'm going to start working my way through alphabetically <laughs> a few of the vendors. I have not, I'm not covering all the vendors because I didn't purchase from all the vendors. Unfortunately, my budget only goes so far. <laughs> <laughs> but I bought from some of the vendors there and I've bought from some of the vendors in the past. So I've collected some of that yarn out of my stash and I've also gone through my knitwear collection and pulled out a few pieces that have been made from yarn from those vendors also. So I'm just going to start working through and tell you a little bit about them and show you what I bought. <laughs> so the first one that I want to tell you about is Anfield Farm. Now, Anfield Farm is over in, Dunf well, just outside Dunfermline. As the crow flies, that's under 10 miles from me. However, it is across the water, so I would have to go across the bridge. <laughs> but they are, uh, they're a wonderful producer of Scottish mohair. I don't know anybody else that's producing Scottish mohair. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but may I think they might be the only producers. They have a wonderful flock of Angora goats. This is Andrew and Laurie-Anne and they started producing, well I started seeing them at festivals, I think about the first time I saw them was last Scottish Wool Producers Showcase in 2022 and I bought some yarn from them at that point, let me find it, here it is. So this was the first skein that I purchased of Anfield Farm Scottish Mohair and this is 50% mohair and 50% Shetland. And the Shetland comes from another local farm to them. It's, this is a DK weight. It's 196 meters per 100 grams. And it's the, in the natural colorway, so it's undyed. It's lovely and soft. It's not, um, 
uh, mohair silk so it's not perhaps the kind of um, the soft mohair that you might be familiar with but it is still because it's a wool mohair uh, it's got this wool content to it and it's so lovely and really beautiful so it's got this lovely gleam on it so I picked that up last year and this year I treated myself to a skein of their four ply which they're now stocking um, I didn't see any on their website. I think they are only offering it at, at events at the moment. This colourway is called Smoked Salmon. They've started to do some um, dyeing of their undyed yarn um, in, their, in their farm. And so they've got some really fun names. My favourite one is Scottish Summer, which is a dark grey. <laughs> but this one here is, is called Smoked Salmon and it's a four ply. And actually this is a different blend because whereas this is 50% mohair, 50% Shetland, this is 70% mohair and 30% Shetland. And you can see the gleam on it from those Angora fleeces. So you can see the, the difference in the blend there, I think. So I'm really excited to have some of this in my stash. I think I paid £25 for this and it's worth every single penny. It is glorious. Again, it's that very soft, but still rustic. You can still tell that this is, this is um, you know, wooly wool, but with this wonderful mohair content. So I got some of that. I intend to use this, I think, for a shawl. So I'd quite like to pair it up with some mohair silk and maybe do stripes or something with it, maybe some lace. I think with the Shetland wool content, it will um, have good stitch definition while the mohair will create a really lovely halo and drape. So I think it would be really beautiful mixed together with some mohair silk for a shawl. So that's my intention for that. And for this, well, for this, I need to tell you about the next farm. So the next farm I want to tell you about is called Brawley Muir. And Brawley Muir, Muir, Brawley Muir Farm is about 66 miles from where I live. So it's the furthest away <laughs> from all of the vendors that I purchased from. So that's quite amazing. So Brawley Muir Farm was bought by Matteo back in 2020. And he inherited a flock of Hebridean sheep. And so he decided that he wanted to try and get some of the fleece from his sheep uh, spun up into hand knitting yarn. And so he discovered that it was uh, certainly more on the rustic side as Hebridean uh, fleece is. And so he got in touch with London Bay, which is the only producer of Scottish cashmere. And he bought seven cashmere goats from London Bay and he has started to blend that together with his Hebridean flock. So with his Hebridean fleece. So he brought a very small quantity of absolutely exquisite yarn and he, he was on the flock table, which was the, the table which included an, a number of different vendors rather than having uh, singular tables because he, he's you know got such a low quantity of such precious yarn. And it was actually the first yarn that I bought because I knew about this already because I had been watching Eva's Lunchtime Lives with various different vendors and producers who were coming to the showcase. So if you go over onto the Scottish Yarn Festival Instagram, and I will have a link to that, but or onto their YouTube channel, then you can watch these lives. And I would recommend that you do that because even although the event has passed, you get to see the vendors and producers in their in their own species, in their farms, on the in the fields with their flocks. And uh, and yes, yeah, so I had watched a live with Matteo and he had spoken about this particular yarn and what he was bringing. And he also uh, introduced us to some of his animals as well. So um, that already made you feel as though you had like a connection to these to these producers before you actually arrived at the event, which I really loved. And so I made a beeline for this yarn here. And this is the Hebridean cashmere blend. So you can see that dark yarn there. The dark fiber is from the Hebridean flock. You can see them there. <laughs> and we've got some of those cashmere goats there as well. You can see them there too. 
So this is 100 grams and it's 155 meters. So a little bit, uh, where is it? There it is. <laughs> so a little bit of a thicker weight yarn than this, but I think that the two together would make for some really beautiful color work knits. And that's what I want to do with these because I think this is incredibly precious yarn, as is this. And I think being able to bring together Scottish mohair uh, Scottish cashmere and then the Hebridean and the Shetland fleece all in one all in one um, project would be a really incredibly special thing to do so very meaningful certainly <laughs> so I'm really excited about this I got this for 16 pounds and it, again worth every penny it isn't so this is not like 100% cashmere. So it's not super, 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 super soft, which cashmere is, because it has been blended with this Hebridean fleece. So it has a, a rustic feel to it. It's a bit crisper, I would say, than this. I would say this is, this is a little bit softer than this, but I'm so intrigued to see how the two work together in, a, in color work and then uh, what happens when they're, when they're washed and, um, and how, the, how the yarn starts to bloom. So really excited about these purchases because this brings together a purchase from last year and one from this year. So there we go, that's Brawley Muir Farm. The, set, the third producer <laughs> that I want to share with you is called The Border Mill. Sorry, I'm slurping on my tea here. The Border Mill. So I have purchased from The Border Mill before. I didn't purchase from The Border Mill this time. They did have all their beautiful yarns there. They, they do a lot of their own blends and they also um, do milling for, for small producers also. So you might remember if you've been watching the, the Meaningful Stitch that I knitted a garment from their alpaca rose fibre last year. I was so intrigued by this fibre when I saw it at the Scottish Wool Producers Showcase in 2022. I bought a number of different colours because it was just completely glorious. It is a 50% alpaca, 50% rose fibre blend, which, and the rose fibre really brings a, a real sort of silkiness to the yarn. And so I decided that I was going to knit this. And this is the, uh, the Maywick by Gudrun Johnson. And it's from the Shetland Trader book three. And I just absolutely love this. So I have used more colours in mine than in the original. And I've made it short sleeved as well, rather than long sleeved, which is in pattern. So I made a, a couple of those modifications, but I really want to show you the yarn because you can see it's got a really lovely gleam to it. And actually the garment has a beautiful drape to it. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. I've actually paired this up with a little bit of hand dyed Suri Lace, which I bought from the Perth Festival of Yarn, which is what the, is the previous incarnation of the Scottish Yarn Festival, uh, from Blue Dot Fibre, so Blue Dot Yarns, which is Kate. So that's in there too. But it was an, a really beautiful knit and it was just so lovely to work with. And uh, I actually was in danger, in fact I did run out of one of the colours and because I knitted this to wear to a wedding and I was cutting it a little bit fine, <laughs> uh, I quickly got in touch with the border mill, ordered a couple more skeins and they sent it out to me incredibly quickly. So th that was fortunate because that meant that I could finish the garment and I could wear it to the wedding. And it was a really lovely piece to wear. It felt fancy <laughs> because of this uh, rose fibre and because of this gorgeous garter lace. Um, but it felt really fun as well because of all these beautiful colors. So that's a, that's an item that's been knitted in Border Mill. And what else? And last year I also bought from Border Mill some of their North Coast Tweed, which is their Pure Shetland Four Ply Yarn. Now excuse the crinkling because I haven't taken out the packet, but there you go. You can kind of see that there. So we're moving from <clears throat> from very dark sort of purpley uh, red through to a brighter red through to these very lovely delicate pale pinks. Now I kind of know what I want to do with this. I would like to knit uh, Andrea Maury stripes using this, maybe paired with an undyed yarn. 
So I'm quite excited about that. I think that could be really, really pretty. Um, the pure, I love Shetland yarn anyway, um, because it is such a lovely, soft, yet rustic uh, fibre. And I really love these colours. I got this for £7.50, which feels like uh, a ridiculous deal. It's 150 grams, and it was 100 grams for 360 metres. So I have just over 500 metres, I think. If my math serves me right, which it often doesn't. <laughs> but there we go. That's uh, that's something that I bought last year, but have yet to use. So, But I definitely have plans for so that's the Border Mill. They were established in 2011 and uh, and you can go on their website and you can purchase yarn from their website as well. I recommend you go check that out. At this Scottish Wool Producer Showcase event, uh, they had their alpaca rose, they had alpaca silk, which was exquisite, and their sort of main feature was their cheviot base, which uh, looked lovely and uh, almost marled because it had like almost two different uh, two different plies, colours of different plies, and it was really very beautiful too. So I recommend that you go and check out their website if you're interested. The next thing I want to share with you is the Journal of Scottish Yarns. And I met Susan, who is the, the editor, the publishing editor of um, this publication. I already had issue one, but she very kindly gave me a copy of issue two. Issue three will be coming out in May. The publication cycle is May and November. So, so here we go. Here is last year's spring summer edition. So this came out last May. And it has a number of patterns in it. Let me find the beginning of the patterns. There we go. So the patterns begin here. It's beautiful photography, as you can see. So the last part of the of the magazine is these gorgeous patterns. But this bit here, these are all articles. And actually, there's a huge amount of writing and, and really interesting articles in these in these issues. So, for example, we have articles about the great tapestry of Scotland and Gala Shields. We have a lovely article about Scottish sheep breeds. Let me see if I can find that because, yeah, there we go. There's the Hebridean sheep that I was just mentioning from Matteo's farm. So it's got a wonderful article about that. And it has an article about New Lanark. It has an article, again, about the, about the border mill that I was just mentioning. It's got um, an article about Iona Wool. Well, actually, the, the article about New Lanark is actually in the other issue. So lots and lots of beautiful articles in there. And then in the newest edition, which came out in November, you can see these are really substantial publications and very well put together. Again, we have all of the um, patterns at the back. I will show you two that I'm interested in knitting. This is the Moness shawl and it's knitted in lace and it's been designed by Maddie Harvey who I actually went to school with. She was in my class at high school. <laughs> and then the other pattern that I really love is this, the Duliac jumper. And this is a lovely design by Lucy Haig and Lucy Haig uh, does incredible design work, lots of very complex cables. She's very influenced by Celtic and Pictish art, so really reaching very far back into Scottish history for her inspiration, but creating very beautiful and contemporary designs. And I actually saw this as a sample on the stall, and I don't know whether it's just because the colour, but I'm sure it's not, because look at that, look at that uh, yoke, it's really interesting. So um, so yes, I'm interested in knitting that. And actually there was another really beautiful sample that I loved, which was, let me find it, this one here, the Benaki top. So it's a vest. And I think they had this sample here at the stall. And uh, I was thinking it would look really lovely um, with a little bit of negative ease actually. And so I'm quite tempted to, to cast that one on as well. So yes, lots more articles in this one too. So we have a little bit about Di Gilpin 
uh, who is a Scottish based designer over in Pitt and Weem, so she's over in Fife as well. Uh, we've got a bit about the Black Isle Yarns, the Silly Sheep Fibre Company, uh, we've got a wonderful article about tartan and a little bit about the Scottish diaspora um, perspective over in New Zealand. So again, beautiful patterns, a lovely combination of knitwear, crochet, um, embroidery, some crewel work. There's some toys in there as well. There's accessories, there's garments. So a really lovely mix. And like I said, very substantial publications. So I will be looking out for the next, for the next issue when it comes out in just a couple of months time. So there we go, that's the Scottish, the Journal of Scottish Yarns. And I would say if you are interested at all in any of the yarns or any of the history that I'm, or culture that I'm speaking about here today, then you would uh, be well to get yourself a, a copy of these particular issues. The next producer that I want to tell you about is Lammer Muir Wool. Now, I bought some Lammer Muir Wool last year at the stall uh, for Lammer Muir, they tend to do bundles so you can get like five skeins for uh, for a certain amount and so I split a couple of five skein bundles with my friend Jen and so we got Lammer Muir wool here which is the Hillfoots blend for ply. I got two of the skeins and Jen got three and this is a beautiful blend of Shetland and Gotland and it's 370 meters per 100 grams and this shade is called M Sket. and it's almost it's got like a slight nip to it but it's this gorgeous silvery gray and it is so soft i have such a thing for gotland yarn and i have such a thing for shetland uh, yarn as well so the lammer muir hills are over in east lothian so they're not very far away from here either they're about 25 miles because I live on the north side of Edinburgh, not the south side. If I lived on the south side, it would be a bit closer. But um, but yes, yeah, so they're not very far away at all. And um, they have this wonderful Shetland flock. And then occasionally they'll do blends with uh, yarn that's been sourced from other local flocks, which is the case with this, with this Gotland. So I just absolutely love this. And I'm literally just about to cast this on. In fact, I would have cast this on already if it were not for the fact that my ball winder is currently broken. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna to have to wind it by hand. So I figured I would keep it in the skein looking lovely to show you before I, before I wound it into the ball. But I'm gonna be combining it with some of this, the Hillesvog Solier. And this is in the color Cognac. So this is gonna be a contrast color. This is gonna be my main color. And I'm going to knit the Minster Cowl which is a beautiful colour work cowl featuring Icelandic and Scandinavian uh, stitch patterns from a lot of them predating from, a lot of them predating the 16th century, which is really fun. And that's a design by Linda, Linda Bjork Eriksdotter. So that's what I'm going to be using this from. So I bought that last year. And this I also bought last year which is the Lammer Muir Lace. So I got three of these and Jen got the other two. This is 400 meters per 500, but per 500 grams. That's right, 400 meters per 500 grams. Grown by our own flock, pure Shetland yarn spun in lanolin for an easier knit, perfect for shawls and delicate items. Wash and block after knitting to see this yarn whiten and fluffen up. This is from uh, the 2019 clip. I really like how it tells you which clip it's from. The 2019 and it's in the natural white. You can see it's single ply, single ply lace weight. So I have 1200 meters which is enough for me to do the Moness shawl. So which I will just show you again because it's so beautiful. So this is what I'm going to knit with the Lammer Muir. Isn't it glorious? So I think that's gonna be really, really pretty. Really pleased with that. So I bought that last year. This year I bought more from Lammer Muir and I bought this Simply Shetland four ply. Look at that color. Is it not just glorious? 
So this is an undyed soft yarns wool spun from Shetland fleece from our own flock to create a, to create a soft and bouncy yarn with great depth of colour. This is from the 2022 clip and this is 400 metres per 100 grams. But look at the size of these skeins and that just goes to show because they are incredibly bouncy, just as I imagine the sheep are. <laughs> And, uh, and it is so soft, honestly, this is, I mean, this is soft for me. I would really very easily and quite happily wear this next to skin. I know that if some people are very sensitive or very used to super wash, wash merino, then some of these rustic yarns might not necessarily feel as soft to you as they do to me, but I think they're absolutely very soft and just absolutely gorgeous. This is in the shade Shayla. And I think actually that I might have been the very first person to purchase this particular yarn because they don't have it on their website and they brought it along on the day and uh, to the event. And I think I was the very first person to purchase it. So, and I have to say that just as soon as I picked it up, I couldn't put it back down. So I knew I was gonna have to buy some. So I bought myself two skeins. I don't have plans for it yet, but um, I'm sure I will. We'll come up with something. So there we go, that's the Lammer Muir. Now, what else? Midwinter Yarns, that's the next seller, the next producer that I want to share with you. Now, Estelle at Midwinter Yarns quite often stocks uh, Scandinavian based uh, yarns, and she also is a stockist of Lithuanian linen, which I have used certainly in the past and shared here on the podcast. But she has also been doing a crowdfunding uh, project where she's been getting some Welsh wool and this is the BFL, Blue Face Leicester yarn, Blue Face Leicester fleece spun up into some beautiful yarn and then they're hand dyeing it. Um, and this is the last of the previous crowdfunded batch. So they have reached their target for the next batch and so that's going to be getting spun up and uh, and will be dyed up and, and it will be available on their website. So this is a DK weight here. It's a 100% single flock blue fl blue faced Leicester wool and it's six mini skeins, 20 grams each, 42 meters. So approximately 120 grams, 252 meters total. And I got this for 24 pounds. And I think you'll agree that the colour is glorious and the shine on that, even through the, even through the plastic, <laughs> is beautiful. Um, if you are more used to merino yarn, and certainly, you know, less processed merino will have a more rustic feel to it. But if you're more used to the superwash merino and you want to start exploring more rustic based yarn, more wooly wools, then Blueface Leicester I'm also a huge fan of and I think they would be a really good, that that um, yarn would be a really good gateway for you to go and explore some different types of yarn and start to expand your your sense of, of what's actually out there and what's possible because, you know, different yarn, different um, wool blends have different uses, different purposes. So having an awareness of, you know, what, what yarn and what wool will work best for what is actually a really good thing. And so, you know, just broadening your, your sense of, of what's out there and, and what you can use. Okay, so the next thing to share with you is another slurp of my tea, <laughs> is some yarn from Nervous Fibre. Now, Charlotte from Nervous Fibre, she's based over in Glasgow. She has a wonderful colour sense. She's a hand dyer. She dyes on many different bases, but at the Scottish Wool Producers Showcase, she brought along with her some uh, of her uh, bases, which are British wool. So she bought along a couple of bases, I think, which are from John Arbin. So she had some hand-dyed Exmoor Sock and hand-dyed Devonia. She had some Corridale and she also had a new base, which was a BFL Gotland. Now, I've already confessed my love of both BFL and Gotland. So perhaps it's not surprising that I did actually leave with some of that. And I, did, I bought a sweater quantity. <laughs> But look at this yarn. This one's already started to come undone, so I'm going to open this up to show you properly. But look at the colour. 
So we've got these beautiful kind of like gold sections, very soft pinks, kind of cocoa colours and richer browns, mauves, a little bit of purple. It is just really, really very beautiful. This colourway is called Tremble. And so I've got three of these and it is 75% BFL, 25% Gotland, it's fingering weight and it's 350 metres per skein. So I have three skeins. I'm really pleased with my, really pleased with my purchase. <laughs> and uh, that was the last thing that I bought before I left the venue because at that point, I realised that um, if I didn't leave soon, I was going to buy, I was going to, I was going to spend all my money <laughs> because it was very easy done because there was just so much there that was just so unique and so different and so beautiful. Very precious. So the next vendor is New Lanark Spinning and it was really lovely to see them there. They are a 19th century mill. Uh, and they are, I think it's about 30, I checked before I came, before I started recording, I think they're about 32 miles away from me. And uh, so yes, New Lanark Spinning, 19th century mill. They are still producing yarn. They also produce yarn for other smaller producers. And uh, the mill is powered by renewable energy. Uh, they have a wonderful visitor centre there. You can go on a tour, check out the mill. There's the yarn shop. There's a hotel. It's got a lovely restaurant. It's got a spa. Uh, <laughs> and it's got a lovely walk up beside the river. So it is well worth a visit. It's a, it's a really lovely location. Now, I didn't buy any yarn from them this time, but I did quite recently knit with their yarn. So I got this yarn from a friend on a D-stash and it is their uh, Rowan colourway and their DK base. And you can see it's got these sort of red and purple, red and green, sorry, tweedy bits and a little bit of blue as well. And it creates this really gorgeous, rich magenta shade. And I use this yarn for my test knit for Rebecca Clo's is the Crayabea for her Dorney sweater. So you can see the way in which um, it knitted up. It looks fabulous in the cables. It's got a lovely drape. I have worn this jumper a lot. Uh, it is got, it's got a very slight bobbling, but really not very much considering how much I have worn it. <laughs> so it will need a little bit of a, a, deep, a deep pill but it's really lovely. One thing I would say is it does have um, spinning oil in it and so it does still have a little bit of that smell about it, which I don't mind actually. <laughs> but uh, what my plan is is to give it another really good wash and now that our weather is getting a little bit better than it was certainly when I finished this in December, <laughs> uh, I want to try and get it outside to dry and I think that will also make a difference but the yarn itself is lovely, it's pillowy, it's very soft. I knitted this with a strand of um, Holstgarn Titicaca in the colourway Blossom, um, which you can't really see because really the dominant, the dominant colour is this, but there you go. You can maybe see that it maybe warmed up the fabric slightly, this is perhaps slightly cooler. But yes, so that's what I've knitted with the, from the New York, from the New York, from the new Lanark <laughs> uh, spinning company. They have a website as well, which you can purchase from. At the moment, you can only get DK, Aaron and Chunky. I keep living in hope that at some point they're going to produce a four ply because um, because I'm mostly knitting four ply. <laughs> and, uh, and if they were doing four ply cones, I think they would be very, very popular. So... So if they're listening, <laughs> it's my suggestion. <laughs> okay, next up I have Unaru Designs and that's Alex and she's based in the Cairn Gorms, which is up in the Highlands of Scotland. And Alex is a hand dyer and she produces, she um, dyes only on 100% British wool. And I've included her in, in today's uh, episode because I went to her talk 
I didn't actually buy any of our yarn this time, although it was beautiful. Particularly, had a really gorgeous shade of green, which was just absolutely stunning. Um, but I didn't purchase any this time, but I did go to her talk and she is a history, uh, an academic historian and she has a, a wonderful way of presenting, very knowledgeable, and she did a talk on the history of British wool, taking us from the very, very earliest, earliest days all the way up to, to right now and some thoughts on the future of British wool. And certainly I left feeling uh, very hopeful and optimistic for, for what is to come. And certainly I think the Scottish Wool Producers Showcase really enforced that because it was so incredibly popular and busy and buzzing and full of passionate people. And uh, just uh, had, a, had a real kind of... Um, enthusiasm and excitement about it and that's that's a really lovely thing to see because as you could um as you, as we found out through Alex's talk you know that there has been a very problematic um relationship between um people's well-being and and um, the production of wool certainly throughout the highland clearances and things and then you know more more latterly it's it's been very difficult i think for people to make any money producing wool at all um, and it's, so it's often seen then as a, a byproduct that needs to be disposed of. And so moving away from that and then actually creating these incredible, you know, um, skeins of yarn for us to, to work with. Um, it was, like I said, it was really very encouraging. So please do try and support these these producers and, and the others that, that were present, which I'm, I'm going to list everybody that was present there and with links to everybody, as again, in these show notes. So please do check them out and, and support them where you possibly can. So I have one last producer and that we're, we've moved from Anfield, Brawley Muir, Border Mill, Lammer Muir, midwinter all the way up to the w's so we're at we county yarns <laughs> and we county yarns um they're based in clack manager because clack manager is the wee county it is the smallest county in scotland <laughs> i know that because i used to live there <laughs> and um it used to be a place that was absolutely full of textile mills and woolen mills unfortunately there's no woolen mills there left at all but one of the woolen mills that was there was Todd and Duncan, and they have now moved to Kinross. And uh, they produce a lot of, uh, they spin a lot of cashmere. And so we County Yarns approached them and to spin some lamb's wool for them. And that is now Kinross Four Ply and Kinross Lace, which I have spoken about quite a lot before. So this is my example of Kinross Four ply. I bought this last summer and uh, this is in the porridge colourway and I've held it with a speckled mohair called Sweet Dreams from Cowgirl Blues. The wonderful thing about this lamb's wool is you can tell that it's been spun by people who are familiar, uh, most familiar with cashmere because when you wash this lamb's wool it just softens up so incredibly beautifully and becomes just this most glorious fabric. And you can really see that in this Kinross lace, uh, which I knitted up into a garter goodness by Stephen West, designed by Stephen West. This is in the wildflower colorway. Now this pattern is designed for four ply, but I have used, um, or for fingering weight, but I have used lace weight. So it's created this lovely fabric lovely light fabric which is nice to wear particularly when we're transitioning through seasons which we are now at last <laughs> so it's a beautiful color beautiful rich shade very consistent because i didn't just use one um one skein here but you absolutely can't tell the movement from one skein to the other very consistent in the dye and it's so so light and soft it's completely delicious I really, really love this yarn. And like I said, very, very soft, like, like, a, like a cashmere soft, but certainly not with a cashmere price tag. So we County Yarns sell the Kinross Lace, they sell the Kinross Four Ply. Both of that is available on their website. Uh, I think they are also available at Beautiful Knitters down in London. And I think you can also get it from Be Inspired Fibres in Edinburgh. So if you wanted to go and check it out before you bought online. The 
other uh, product that we county yarn sells are the JC Rennie mini balls. So these are really in these are really um, established mills. So Todd and Duncan was established in 1867. JC Rennie was established in 1798. So it's really good to see these um, wonderful companies with such heritage continuing to produce and continuing to to make yarn that we all love to to work with. And I didn't buy any JC Rennie mini balls this time, but I did receive this for my Christmas from my grandma. So you can see the gorgeous different colors. And I will pick out one to show you. Um, let's make it this one, I think, because you can really see, you can see the real heathering in the colors. This is Oogie Pearl. <laughs> and the mini balls are, 10 grams, which is 45 to 56 meters each. So, uh, I, like I said, I've just got so many, like look at this one. Look at the black, but it's got all of these different shades within it. That one is called Midnight. So just beautiful, beautiful yarns. They do a wonderful advent calendar. So if you're interested in an advent calendar that's more on the rustic side and, and focus with a focus on colour work rather than on hand-dyed mini skeins, then they might be one to check out. They're much more affordable um, than some of the hand-dyed mini skeins and they produce a pattern that's been specially produced for that, for that year's advent as well. So um, I have purchased that for a friend in the past and um, she absolutely loved it. So, and produced an incredible scarf with it. So, um, so yes, check out We County Yarns and if you ever get a chance to go to a festival where they're at, you will have just the most delightful time picking out all of the colours, <laughs> making up your own mini ball sets. <laughs> So that brings me to the end of this particular episode. I'll be recording a longer episode focused on, you know, more general things like what I'm working on and what's on my needles and what's off my needles and all that kind of thing. But before I go, I do just want to say thank you so much to Eva for organising this event. Thank you for everybody who supports her to do that. As I said, the Scottish Yarn Festival will be happening in September in Perth. It's the 9th and the 10th of September. Do go sign up for the newsletter and uh, also do go check out the show notes and uh, and you know, check out some of the vendors that I've mentioned and some of the others that I haven't mentioned but who were also at the event. Um, I'm going to include all of their information there. And I really recommend that you go and uh, follow all of these accounts on Instagram, if you're on Instagram, because then your whole feed will just be full of just the most delightful photographs of sheep and beautiful countryside <laughs> and fun goats, goats um, of all kinds. And uh, just, it's just a total delight. So, um, so if you would like to have some of that in your Instagram feed, then go and follow them as well. And like I said, I'm gonna share wherever I can if, where you can purchase these yarns from, but some of them will only be available at these particular events. So keep an eye open for next year's Scottish Wool Producers Showcase. As I said, this one sold out, uh, so get your tickets sooner rather than later so that you don't miss out. And, uh, and maybe I will see you in Perth in September. Okay, my loves. <laughs>